As we edge closer to Computex 2024, we stand at an exciting precipice. This is the time when the giants of the semiconductor industry pull back the curtain, revealing new products, and at the very least, the innovative architectures that will be powering the future generation of products set to hit the market later this year. This period of anticipation often leaves PC gamers in a quandary. Those considering an upgrade or a new purchase face a dilemma. Should they take the plunge now or hold off in the hopes of acquiring faster, more advanced hardware for just a little more investment? It's a compelling question, and one that might not have such a straightforward answer. Eight years ago, the advice would have been simple, wait. But does that conventional wisdom still hold true today? Let's delve into this topic in today's video and shed some light on this conundrum faced by many PC gamers worldwide. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. 2024 is going to be a very intriguing and perhaps an exciting year for those of us in the PC hardware and gaming space. This is because there will be plenty of new generation hardware to look forward to based on totally new architectures. This will allow us to see new GPUs, CPUs with not just better performance, but also cool new features to impact our gameplay experiences. Nvidia is expected to release the RTX 50 series based on their Blackwell architecture, and I'm sure the vast majority of you are already informed on what kind of showing they'll put out, as with Nvidia, not only do they bring impressive leaps in performance, but they also have very enticing new features that we didn't have with a prior generation. With the RTX 40 series, it was frame generation, and for many, it was a game changer as it allowed one to play visually demanding games and alleviating some of the performance hit and or also allowing lower end hardware to remain relevant. So who knows what kind of new feature they'll introduce and wow everyone with, but it's one to definitely keep an eye on. With Intel, we've got their Arrow Lake S desktop CPUs to look forward to, which is something I'm quite interested in, as it's a new architecture and not a refresh, and it will be built on a new node with some upgrades. And on the GPU front, we've got Intel's Battle Mage series coming, which I personally feel like should have been out by now, but we'll reserve judgment until they're actually out on the market. And then with AMD, they'll also be competing on two different fronts. On the desktop side of things, we've got Zen 5, which will also be a new architecture and on a new node, but what makes it appealing is that it will be compatible with current generation AM5 600 series motherboards, making it an easy upgrade for anyone who's already on the platform. And then on the GPU side of things, we've got RDNA 4, which is certainly going to be an interesting series, as I've heard it's going to be a mixed bag, but we'll talk about that in another video. With all that said, the bottom line is that there's plenty of new hardware to look forward to and on the horizon. And due to that, it puts an individual who may be shopping today in the market in a conflicting position. And this happens every couple couple of years when we start to enter that period where current generation hardware will be reaching the two year mark, the RTX 4090, the RX 7900 XTX, the 4080, and plenty of other graphics cards came out in the last quarter of 2022 or Q1 of 2023. At this stage, does it make sense to pay full or maybe slightly discounted pricing for this current gen stuff when the alternative is that you can wait and there's a chance you could end up with the latest hardware with newer features and also better performance for relatively the same same price. However, the answer isn't a simple yes or no, and I can't give you my own definitive choice in the matter as well because it really does come down to your circumstances. What we can go over some of the different types of scenarios and look at what's happened in the past, which therefore will help you should you find yourself in that situation. I don't want to be that person who's screaming at you guys saying hurry and go buy a GPU now, and then five or six months down the road, Nvidia or AMD release a new GPU for the same price and it's like 50% faster. So this is actually a a good segue into why buying a high-end GPU for full price may not be the right move at this time. This happened a few months prior to the launch of the RTX 40 series and the announcement of the 4090 and I remember Jay's Two Cents had made a video and he had argued why people should just go out and buy an RTX 3090 or the fastest AMD card that was out in the market like the 6950 XT because there was no guarantee that the next gen flagship would be the same price and it could be even more expensive than most people are anticipating. His reasoning wasn't unjust because that did happen in the past. Many thought that the 20 series might be following the same pricing scheme as the 10 series, but when it came out, there was a significant price increase across the board, leaving many disappointed. The 1080 Ti retailed for just $699, whereas the RTX 2080 Ti, when it came out, had an MSRP of $999, but really it was $1199 because that's what the Founders Edition had sold for. So then people got turned off by that, and a lot of people ended up rejecting it. Decided to buy the 1080 Ti instead, but 
but stock ran out and then nobody could buy it. However, when it came to the transition between the 30 series and the 40 series, this wasn't the case. I do recall Nvidia and the AIBs doing a covert price drop where the 3090 was selling for around $1,300 or $1,400 a couple months after the launch down from its original MSRP of $1,999. But had someone bought a 3090 Ti for $1,400 in August, they'd probably feel like crap considering they could have just waited a few months and gotten an RTX 4090 for $1,600 that was like 60 to 70% faster. But to be fair, when the 4090 did come out, it did sell like hotcakes, and I recall even for several months after its release, it was still difficult to find, and it wasn't until the summer of 2023 where it was more readily available and the prices had come down a bit, and I had even seen some 4090s going for around $1,400. But then not too long after that, the AI craze took over the market, and that also coincided with the China ban where the RTX 4090s weren't allowed to be sold there anymore and then this caused a surge of companies and people who worked in AI to buy these cards up and then the 4090 became hard to find again along with prices going up. So fast forward to today and the 4090s are readily available but prices on most cards are still higher than where I'd like them to be. Taking a look at Newegg and you can see how lower tier 4090s are like $1800 and then the more premium cards are around $2000 which is just absolutely crazy. This is why many people within the PC hardware and gaming community are telling folks that spending over MSRP on a nearly two year old card is dumb because there's a possibility you could end up spending that same amount on a much faster GPU with newer features and capabilities. But as we saw with the transition from the 10 series to the 20 series, there could also be a big price jump again. Considering how well the 4090 sold, I've got a good feeling its successor will get a price hike. The RTX 5090 could come out at $2,500 or even $3,000. Or, if it does turn out to be the same price as the 4090's MSRP, great, awesome. But then what guarantee do you have that you'll be able to snag one come launch? If the 5090 comes out and it's selling for around $1,800 to $2,000, but offers like 60-80% to faster performance over the 4090, I've got a feeling it's gonna sell out again, and you might see people going, okay, I'll just buy a 4090 then, then guess what? The options void due to limited availability come Q4 2024. This is why waiting can be a bit of a double-edged sword. You can wait and end up with a faster component for similar money, or you could end up losing out if there is a drastic price hike and the card you originally wanted is then no longer available. And I know I was focusing on the high end here, but if you look at entry level or mid-range options, it gets worse. In the high end, regardless of pricing, there will always be a performance jump because that's where they'll be showcasing their architecture's best capabilities and they'll make you pay for it. Whereas in the lower end, not only can prices go up, but performance can stagnate, or worse, it can even regress. If you guys recall with the RTX 4060 series, those cards looked like an absolute joke when they came out. The 4060 Ti especially looks quite underwhelming considering the fact that there was no progression and the price was the same or it was higher if you looked at the 16 gig model. Make no mistake, Nvidia did release the true RTX 4060, but they also sold it at a higher price than what most were accustomed to and they did it in a way that made it more acceptable amongst the masses. How they did it was that they simply called it an RTX 4070. You see, everything below the 4080 was shifted up a tier, but they didn't make it as obvious because then the backlash would have been terrible, so they played around with the naming. Then again, the 4060 series was received in quite a negative light, but that did little to affect their sales numbers, and you can see how on the Steam hardware surveys, they're the best selling 40 series cards. But circling back to our topic on hand, if someone is in the market for building a new PC or they're looking at upgrading their GPU and they're buying within the mainstream or mid-range segment, I'd be more inclined to tell you to just buy whatever fits your budget at this time and not worry about what the future holds. Plus, you also have to remember that the mid-range and entry-level cards come out several months down the road as Nvidia always rolls out the generation with the high-end options first and then they gradually work their way down. And for all we know, given what's happened with this generation, the RTX 5060 could be starting at $450 and the 5060 Ti could be starting at $550 with a 10% performance boost at best. Another reason why some people suggest you're better off waiting for new cars to come out even if you're not going to be interested in the new series is because this will make prices on older cards go down which will therefore allow you to get a better deal. But if there are price hikes across the board then this isn't going to hold true unless Blackwell is a tremendously large leap over Ada Lovelace. So what I mean by this is if the RTX 5090 is 80% faster than a 4090. 
but it is $2,500, then that sort of mitigates its appeal because yes, it's faster, but it's also like 57% more expensive. So that's exactly what happened with the 4080. But if there is an RTX 5080 at say $1,400 and that's 50% faster than a 4090, plus it has that new gimmick or exclusive feature, then yeah, I can see that tanking the value of older cards because then you can get an RTX 5070 Ti for $1,000 or $900 and that'll be matching an RTX 4090 with the new feature. And then people will lose their minds because they'll go, oh my god, it's 4090 levels of performance for just the $1,000. You guys see where I'm going with this? Again, this is all gonna come down to just how much faster Blackwell will be over ADA, but I'm just speculating here and throwing out those scenarios. Along with that, the reason why I'm mentioning figures, which may seem kind of obscene for some of you, is because if the rumors are true and AMD is really going to be absent from the high end, then this gives Nvidia the opportunity just to do whatever the hell they want. I mean, they already kind of were, but in this case, what other options will you have? What will AMD have that can compete with an RTX 5070 Ti or RTX 5080? Hence, this makes the situation similar to when Turing launched in 2018. AMD had no answer for Nvidia in the high end. Their fastest GPU at the time could only compete with an RTX 2060, a mid-range card. So, with all of that taken into consideration, if there was someone in the market today looking for a new GPU for a build, or they just wanted to upgrade to something newer, then I'd be inclined on telling them to just pull the trigger, get your GPU today and just enjoy your games. Maybe not the 4090 because dropping nearly two grand on a two-year-old card can be a bit hard to stomach, but if you were to go for a mid-range option, which won't have its replacement come out until later than that, it would probably be more feasible for you. And then, let's not forget about the used market it either and this is a great option for those who are finding themselves to be in a really indecisive position go on ebay or something like that get yourself an rtx 3080 which is still a very capable gpu today for 1080p and 1440p gaming and just bide your time with that then you can decide once the next generation of hardware rolls around on what to do whether that's buying a 50 series card or buying a discounted 4080 super or something along the lines of that now I know I've also touched upon CPUs, this might be a section I cover for another video, but as of right now, if you've got a Ryzen 7000 or Intel Alder Lake or Raptor Lake CPU, you're still fine. But that's going to do it for this one, we'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.